Throughout the history of commercial seafaring, numerous attempts have been made to find the shortest route from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific. The traditional route from Europe to Asia via the Suez Canal spans over 23,000 kilometers, making it a lengthy and arduous journey. In comparison, the route through the Northern Sea Route NSR, across the Arctic Ocean is about 14,000 kilometers. Despite the shorter distance, seafarers faced significant challenges due to the persistent Arctic sea ice, which repeatedly thwarted their plans. Many attempts to navigate the NSR failed until September 1915, when Boris Vilkitsky's expedition successfully completed the first through voyage from Vladivostok to Arkhangelsk. This remarkable journey, undertaken on the ice-breaking steamships Tamir and Vygok, took over a year to accomplish. The situation began to improve with the development of heavy diesel and later nuclear icebreakers in the USSR. The introduction of the nuclear icebreaker fleet marked a significant turning point, transforming the NSR into a viable national transportation artery. Today, four powerful icebreakers, Tamir, Vagoch, Yamal, and 50 Let Pobody, operate in the Arctic. However, experts believe that this fleet is still insufficient to meet the demands of modern maritime traffic. The Russian icebreaker fleet, the only one of its kind in the world, was predominantly established during Soviet times. The newest icebreaker, 50 Let Pobody, launched in 2006, also had its inception under Soviet authority. Since then, no new icebreakers had been built until recent years. The volume of cargo traffic on the NSR has been continuously growing, significantly surpassing Soviet-era levels. This increased demand has necessitated the introduction of even more powerful ships to support the existing icebreakers. In response, the first of a new generation of icebreakers, named Arctica, was launched from the Baltic shipyard in St. Petersburg in May 2020. Two more similar ships, Sibir and Earl, are set to follow. These are the largest icebreakers in the world each over 170 meters long and equipped with electric motors totaling 60 megawatts, approximately 81,577 horsepower. They are capable of breaking ice up to 2.9 meters thick. Despite these advancements, the fleet still faces challenges in ensuring rapid and reliable navigation through the treacherous northern seas. The development and deployment of these new icebreakers represent a significant step forward Yet the need for further enhancements remains critical to fully exploit the potential of the Northern Sea Route. The Arctica-class icebreakers of Project 2 2220 are designed primarily for operations in the Western Arctic regions. In the Eastern Arctic, where ice conditions are particularly severe during the winter months, Arctica-class icebreakers are limited to operating during the lighter ice periods of summer and autumn. During the harsh winter and spring seasons, when ice is most challenging, these icebreakers can still function, but cannot guarantee the timely movement of ships on a strict schedule. This reliability is crucial for the Northern Sea Route to be competitive with the Suez Canal Route. The LEADER project aims to position Russia at the forefront of maritime transport by ensuring year-round navigation on the Northern Sea Route. The LEADER icebreaker is part of a broader program to create an optimized fleet for the Eastern Transport Corridor which is vital for Russia to maintain an efficient route for delivering hydrocarbons from the Yamal Peninsula and Dudinka to Asian markets. This initiative is designed to operate independently of the sanction policies imposed by leading countries. By 2030, Russia aims to deliver at least 70 million tons of hydrocarbons annually to Southeast Asian markets through this newly established route. To achieve this goal, tankers and gas carriers must be able to navigate the new route continuously. Currently, most cargo from Europe is transported via the Suez Canal. The Northern Sea Route is essentially twice as short as the Suez Canal route, but the actual distance is less critical than the speed of transport. The commercially effective speed for such operations is around 10-12 knots. To ensure this speed, a corresponding icebreaker is necessary, and the leader icebreaker is designed to fulfill this role. Given the deep draft of modern tankers and gas carriers, both traditional and high-latitude routes, where ice thickness can reach up to 2.5 meters, are being considered. The Central Design Bureau Iceberg has developed a ship with a displacement of 70,000 tons and equipped with a 120 MW nuclear installation, which is double the power of current icebreakers, to handle such extreme conditions. Specifically for the leader icebreaker, the Afrikantov OKBM in Nizhny Novgorod 
developed the RETM-400 reactor, which has a thermal output of 315 MW. Each liter icebreaker will be equipped with two RETM-400 reactors, effectively reducing the number of reactors needed for the same power output and making the operation more cost-effective. The principle behind the reactor of the liter icebreaker is straightforward, akin to that of a steam boiler, where chemical reactions generate thermal energy. This energy is used to heat water, producing steam that drives the ship's turbines. Each of the four turbo generators on board produces 37 MW of power, amounting to a total of 150 MW. To harness this immense power, the icebreaker is equipped with 430 MW propeller motors, marking the first instance where four such motors have been used on an icebreaker. This increase in technical complexity and size makes the leader the largest nuclear icebreaker in the world. It measures 200 meters in length, is as tall as a multi-story building, and significantly wider than previous icebreakers. The hull width of the leader is specifically designed to ensure the passage of 50 meter wide ships. Consequently, the leader icebreaker will create a 52 meter wide channel in its wake, allowing large tankers to follow with ease. Additionally, the icebreaker's design has been refined through advanced testing of models in ice pools and wind tunnels. The Krylov State Research Center in St. Petersburg has conducted tests on all Russian icebreakers using scale models to simulate real-world conditions. These rigorous tests ensure that the icebreaker can effectively break through ice and navigate challenging ice fields. The innovative, high-strength steel alloys used for the icebreaker's propellers, developed by Prometi, are crucial for operations in extreme temperatures. These advanced materials will also be employed in constructing the leader enabling it to function optimally in the harshest conditions. The leader's remarkable ice-breaking capability, able to handle ice up to 4 meters thick at a speed of 2 knots, and its efficiency in navigating the northern sea route at commercially viable speeds, make it a cornerstone of Russia's future maritime strategy. Furthermore, the advanced air cushion system incorporated into its design reduces friction, thereby enhancing its performance in dense ice conditions. The leader's advanced features combined with its unprecedented power and size, represent a significant leap forward in icebreaker technology, ensuring its pivotal role in facilitating maritime navigation in polar regions. This icebreaker not only paves the way for larger commercial vessels, but also underscores Russia's commitment to maintaining and expanding its presence in the Arctic. The most challenging obstacles for icebreakers are often encountered by Arctic icebreakers navigating through fields of broken ice. In these demanding conditions, model tests are conducted to accurately determine the ship's speed and maneuverability in various scenarios. These tests provide essential data not only for ship design and hull form optimization, but also for developing a comprehensive maritime transport system. Future developers must understand how the icebreaker will perform under different ice conditions throughout the changing seasons. This includes critical parameters such as speed and travel time between destinations while leading other ships through icy waters. These complex challenges are addressed in the Ice Basin, a specialized facility designed to replicate Arctic conditions. Concurrently, another test basin evaluates the ship's ability to withstand ocean waves, ensuring the icebreaker can handle both ice-covered and open-sea environments. The testing process involves creating a precise model of the icebreaker, scaled down to exactly 1 63rd of the actual size of the icebreaker leader. This model is subjected to various simulated conditions to gather comprehensive data on its performance. An electric wave generator, capable of simulating storm conditions from any location in the world, is used to test the icebreaker's seaworthiness. Although icebreakers are inherently strong and powerful, they are not typically designed for prolonged periods in open seas devoid of ice, where they may encounter severe storms. For the leader, designers aim to achieve a balance between effective ice navigation and seaworthiness. This required a compromise that ensures the icebreaker can perform well in rough seas, which is crucial for the vessel's survival, operational speed, and the comfort of its crew. Reduced rolling motion significantly improves the crew's well-being by minimizing seasickness and enhancing overall efficiency. Data from the Krylov State Research Center indicates that results from these basin tests align with real sea trials with an impressive accuracy rate of 99%, despite the idealized conditions present in the test basins. 
This high level of accuracy underscores the reliability of the testing procedures and the robustness of the icebreaker's design in both ice-filled and open sea environments. Wind tunnel tests are critical for further assessing the adverse effects of airflows around the ship. These tests use a smoke generator to visualize vortices around the hull, which can impact the ship's maneuverability. One of the primary tasks during these tests is examining the wind conditions over the helipad, as the large superstructure creates significant turbulence. For instance, helicopters like the Mi-8 and K-32 have limitations on vertical speed components, and turbulence can lead to catastrophic rotor interactions. To address this issue, solutions included raising the helipad or installing deflectors to streamline airflow. The Leader Icebreaker's streamline design, which is smoother than traditional nuclear icebreakers like the Arctica, helps to reduce aerodynamic issues, ultimately saving time and money. In addition to physical testing, supercomputer simulations play a crucial role in predicting helicopter landings in various weather conditions. Modern icebreakers, such as the Leader, are equipped with advanced safety systems, including sophisticated fire suppression and reactor protection systems, ensuring safety even in emergencies. Notably, the Leader's reactor cooling system can operate without electricity using air-based heat exchangers, a first for icebreakers. This innovation adds an extra layer of safety and reliability. Furthermore, the ship's double hull is designed to protect against collisions and groundings with specific features to mitigate the effects of various accidents. The well-being of the crew is also a top priority. The leader is equipped with single cabins, sports facilities, and recreational areas to ensure the crew's comfort during their four-month shifts. Automation on board has significantly reduced the crew size to 60, compared to 75 on older icebreakers, which helps lower operational costs. Additionally, the leader can accommodate up to 150 additional personnel and is provisioned to support them for up to eight months, ensuring readiness for extended missions. The leader project, initiated on July 6, 2020, at the Zvezda Shipbuilding Complex, represents a significant step forward in Russia's maritime capabilities. Scheduled to be operational by 2027, this ambitious endeavor aims to bolster Russia's Arctic presence. If the initial project proves successful, it is anticipated that two additional ships will be constructed, thereby significantly enhancing Russia's operational capabilities in the Arctic region. The overarching goal of the Leader Project is not only to strengthen Russia's Arctic fleet, but also to stimulate growth in related industries, ensuring long-term orders and economic benefits. This strategy is reminiscent of the advancements made during the development of the 22000 series icebreakers which were instrumental in pioneering new electric motor technologies within Russia. These technological innovations have had a profound impact on the country's maritime industry, showcasing Russia's ability to advance its scientific and engineering frontiers. Central to this development is the modern Sabeta port, located on the Yamal Peninsula. This port is crucial for the export of liquefied natural gas, LNG, to both Europe and Asia demonstrating the Northern Sea Route's potential to drive Arctic economic development. The strategic importance of this route is comparable to the historical significance of the Silk Road, which was a major conduit for trade and cultural exchange. As we conclude our journey through the history and advancements of the Northern Sea Route, we witness the remarkable evolution from early expeditions thwarted by ice to today's powerful nuclear icebreakers. The introduction of the Arctica class and the groundbreaking leader project marks a new era in Arctic navigation, showcasing unparalleled engineering and commitment to year-round accessibility. The Northern Sea Route stands as a testament to human ingenuity and resilience, transforming what was once an insurmountable barrier into a vital artery of global maritime trade. As Russia continues to innovate and expand its fleet, the NSR not only enhances economic prospects, but also reaffirms its strategic importance on the world stage. Thank you for joining us on this fascinating exploration. Stay tuned for more insights into the incredible feats of maritime engineering and the untold stories of the high seas. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with fellow enthusiasts of maritime history and innovation. Until next time, safe travels on your own adventures.